The roots of a quadratic equations are also known as solutions to the quadratic equations. They are actually the values of the variables which can make the equation true. The other name for roots of quadratic equations are actually zeros. We are going to learn why by sharing to you right now the material containing a practice exercise. This practice exercise is focused on determining the roots of the quadratic equations. We have many different operations in solving the roots of quadratic equations, but in this practice exercise, we are um, required to use the square root method, or the other name for it is by extracting square roots. Okay. Again, we are going. I'm going to share to you also why the roots of quadratic equations, aside from being the solutions, are also called zeros of quadratic equations. The the process of square root method is very effective if your B coefficient is equal to zero. In the previous video, you already know how to uh, determine the A, B, and C coefficients of a quadratic equations. Now, if B coefficient is equal to zero, or in short, there is no term with the first degree of X, square root method is, easy, is the easiest to use. Of course, you can still use the other methods for this, but again, square root methods is easiest to use when B is not around. Let us start with number one. In number one, this is our uh, first leading uh, leading term, which makes it a quadratic equation. So this is actually contains our a coefficient, and our negative eighty one is just the constant or c coefficient. So we don't have b for this one. So we can actually just use automatically, uh, easy, easily the square roots methods. And to do that, we are going to subtract both sides. Or I mean, add both sides by eighty one. So when I add both sides by 81, the left-hand side will remain x squared. The other side would become 0 plus 81, which is actually just equal to 81. Square root method, or the extracting by square, uh, by extracting square roots, simply tell us to take the square root of both sides. Okay. When you take the square root of both sides, we are going to use here the concept of rational exponents or with radical expressions, this will actually become x to the power of 2 over 2, which is just 2 over 2, which is just equal to 1. So x to the power of 1 is just equal to x. And the other side of the equation, your right-hand side, will take the root of 81. But do, do not forget that when you take the root of any number, okay, we are actually going to take two values here, the positive and the negative root of that number. As to why we are taking the positive and negative root of the number, it is actually based on the concept that any perfect square number is a product of a number multiplied to itself on its positive and negative, negative value. Let's just consider four. Four is a perfect square number. And it is a perfect square number of two because two squared or two times two is equal to four. But aside from positive 2, negative 2, when squared, will also result to 4. So negative 2 times negative 2 will also result to 4. In short, both positive and negative 2, when squared, will give us the perfect square value of 4. So when we take the square root of 4, that those two are the possible answers. That is why we take into consideration the positive and negative values. So in this case, the value for the x here is the positive and negative square root of 81 it is actually 9. So x is equal to 9 and x is negative 9. These are the roots of the quadratic equation given in number 1. They are again called solutions because when you're going to substitute the value of 9 here, 9 squared, is 81 minus 81, it will satisfy the equation equal to zero. Similar to negative nine, negative nine squared is positive 81, minus 81 will also result to zero. So these are actually called solutions. Now, as to why the roots are also called zeros, these values of x here will make uh, the, uh, when the, because the equation is in standard form, just like this, this is already in standard form it will make the left-hand side or the side where the quadratic expression belongs to equal to zero, okay? 
when you substitute 9, that will equal to 0. When you substitute it by negative 9, that will equal to 0. In standard form, again, in standard form, it will make the quadratic expression here on one side equal to 0. That's why the roots are also called as zeros. Other references use as E or use E or other, and other references use without E. Nevertheless, they both mean the same thing. Zeros of quadratic equation. So these are the values. Now for number two, again, we don't have B coefficient. So square root methods is easiest to solve by adding both sides by eight. By eight. So this will become x squared. When you add by eight, that's become that becomes zero. The other side, zero plus eight will be solved to eight. And then we take the root of both sides. And don't forget that you're actually taking the positive and negative root of this. So the other, the, the left-hand side will become x, and the other side will become positive, negative, square root of 8, which could actually be expressed okay, using the concept learned in the, in the previous grading. This could be actually expressed into the positive, negative, square root of 4 times 2, just to simplify the radicand here. So x could take the value of positive or negative 2 as the square root of 4, square root of 2. So when you're going to take the two values, the values are positive 2, square root of 2, and x is negative 2, square root of 2. OK. So you have these values for our roots of that equation. If you would like to determine if this will satisfy the equation, you just simply substitute this like x squared, so 2 square root of 2 squared minus 8 must be equal to 0. So 2 uh, power law allows us to do that. So 2 squared is 4 times, let's use a bracket here, times the square, of, uh, square root of 2 is just 2, and then minus 8 equal to 0. Since we are checking, we are may use here this checking is not necessarily required, but I'm just showing you one of the, uh, the way to check so that you could actually try on your own. So 4 times 2 is 8, minus 8, still question mark if it's equal to 0 because we are still checking. So 0 equal to 0, it now satisfies the equation. Therefore, this is really a solution, not just an answer. You could also try the negative here, but again, when you square the negative number, it will take the the positive value. So those two are still solutions of quadratic equations. Okay. So again, if the quadratic equation in standard form don't have any value for b coefficient or the the degree with first that I mean the term with the first degree of x is not around, you could easily use the square root method. Aside from that, you could also use the square root method if the given quadratic equation is or has one side in a square of a binomial form. This is, this is already a square of a binomial form. Okay, So if it's already in a square of binomial form, let me rewrite it here. x plus 3, you have here squared. The other side is 4. So simply take the square root because it's already in the square of a binomial. You also take it here, but do not forget I'm always repeating this one to take the positive negative value. So by square root of the square, it will nullify here the square. So we will have a binomial expression, x plus 3, equal to positive and negative square root of 4, which is 2. Okay. Since we have two values, as expected due to the, the, double, uh, the signs here, the positive negative sign, so you just simply subtract both sides by 3. So x is equal to positive, negative 2, minus 3. And then you could break it into two different sets, uh, two different processes, taking the positive 2, minus 3, and taking the negative 2, minus 3. So your roots are, you have here negative 1, and x is equal to negative 5. If you will try to substitute it here, it should satisfy the equation. Let's try. Negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. When you square it, that's equal to 4. Right? Negative 5 plus 3, that's negative 2. When you square it, that is still equal to positive 4. 
So these two are roots or solutions of the quadratic equations. As to why they are, they are also called zeros, take note that this, when written in the standard form, we, we, are pass, we are going to pass this type of equation when we equate it to zero, okay? And when we substitute it here, again, negative one plus three is positive two. Two squared is four minus four. The whole expression will be equal to zero. So this is also, that is why they are also called zeros. Same with negative five. Negative five plus three is negative two. The square of it is positive four. Minus four, the whole expression will also be equal to zero. Again, this is the reason why roots, solutions of quadratic equations are also called zeros of quadratic equations. Now, before we proceed to number four, just to separate the two, because x here is nine, the number one, and x here also equal to negative nine, but x are just the same values, you may try to use this. The first value of x, the second value of x. Yeah. x sub one and x sub two as the first and the second value of x respectively, but still they are still x's which could actually be substituted in the given. So we can just simply do this for the other examples just to, uh, for those who might get confused why there are two different values of x, you may just do that. For number four, we have the same concern with number three. Um, by the way, if you're going to uh, extra expand, rather expand the, the square of binomial for number three and number four, you will have a B coefficient. So unlike number one and two, you, wherein you have no B coefficient, in number three and four, you will have. But since it's already expressed in this form, you may not do that. You may just simply use here the square roots method so that you will not ha have any problem anymore with the... Uh, you you could actually just simply use the square roots method easily. So again, you take the root of this. See so how positive and negative. Uh, it should not be written there. It should be written here. Pardon for the other forms. So you take the root of both sides just to nullify the square root here. So you have x minus one is equal to the positive negative square root of three. And since three is not a perfect square number, so it stays as it is. And then you add both sides by x, so you have x is equal to positive negative square root of 3 plus 1, or you could rewrite it as 1 plus minus square root of 3, since you may just do that. But let's just use this first. And then when you break it into two different values, you may use the the subs here to just to differentiate. So x sub 1 is the positive square root of 3 plus 1. And uh, let me make it this clear. And then you have x sub two is equal to the negative square root of three plus one. So these are the roots of the given quadratic equations. Again, you may try to check that. I'm just going to use the second root to check whether it will satisfy the equation because this has negatives so that you will have uh, easier understanding later on. So we have here the checking for this. So you have the given expression x minus one where x sub two is this. So you have negative square root of three plus one minus one and you square it. And you square that that must be equal to three. It will be equal to three. So when you do this again, one minus one will become zero. So we have, you will have here, uh, the negative square root of three squared, is it equal to three? Uh, what happened to one positive one? When you break this grouping symbol, that just will just be one minus one, so zero. So when you square the negative number, it will become positive here. And when you square the square root of three, you will have three equal to three. And this uh, this now satisfies the equation. So again, this is a root. And if you're just going to use the positive, definitely this will also be the root of the given quadratic equation. So the first method, square root method, is easiest to solve when number one condition, there is no B coefficient. And with number two uh, condition, the one uh, one side of the equation is already expressed as the square of a binomial. Again, I am using the, the term easiest. I'm not saying 
uh, that's the this is the only the method to apply finding the roots for these equations easiest meaning uh, you may not uh, use other methods you may use this just to solve for the roots of the quadratic equations so this is just the first method we still have three methods to be discussed with separate videos later on okay so this is the first part as i, I have said and then this speaks uh, what what do you think will happen if number one there is a b coefficient and the expression is not or may not be expressed as a square of binomial therefore we cannot use the square roots methods we will use the next method that will be presented in the next video thank you for watching please stay tuned see ya